Hi everybody, Raquel Palmisi here. Good to be with you. There's something that I wish to share with you today that is very important and very timely. This morning when I looked at the newspaper, there were two articles, one right under the other. One of them was about an older man who shot a young black teenager. He was, the older male was a white guy, shot a, shot a young black teenager who came to his store by accident to pick up some siblings. You've probably heard about this if you watch the news or um, are in touch with what's going on in, in the country, in the world. Uh, the young man is going to be okay. Uh, but the second article right underneath it were some young people who were on their way to a friend's house in a couple of separate vehicles and they went up the wrong road, ended up uh, on somebody's driveway, realized it as they were turning around, uh, the owner who was upset at people getting lost all the time and showing up on his driveway, shot at them and killed a beautiful young woman. And so it goes. There's no shortage of these stories. Um, a third thing that happened uh, in my life a couple of days ago was um, one of my clients uh, got yelled at by her husband husband left, went to work. She turned around. Their seven-year-old uh, spilled something and the mother just lost it and screamed at him. You, you know, a lot of you know, if you have kids, if you're in relationships, that Anger can erupt so quickly. Before we have a chance to even take a breath, we are laying it on somebody. In these three examples that I'm giving you are all what I call it. I think um, I'm psychologically correct, but I call them projected anger, where the woman's husband would be too difficult to get into a fight with, so she projected her anger onto her child. That is so often the case that we will project our anger onto someone who is safe, unfortunately, for us to do that with. The terrible calamity of the man shooting through his glass door at the young teenager who was coming to the wrong address was anger projected onto that young man. It could be for a million reasons. His being black might have had something to do with it. Whatever is going on in that man's life or in the example of the other man's life with the young people in his driveway Whatever is going on, stuff they can't handle directly, stuff they feel powerless to change, migrates over and is projected on to someone who is safer. We see it all the time and we might experience it all the time. And we have to stop it because this misplaced or projected anger is a toxin that is leading to so much of the heartache and strife and impossibility in our world, especially our country right now. There is so much anger and yet the anger is not directed at the source necessarily. It's directed at something 
that looks like or reminds us of the source. It's projected onto something that we can pick on, that we feel safe with. How do we quit projecting? How do we quit doing that? How do we take this incredibly important step of recognizing how stressed we are, how anxious we are, how our nervous systems are arcing like electric wires within us often. In other words, how at the end of our ropes, we often feel that has got to come out somewhere. We have to find it. We have to figure out how to release the rage before we act out on it. And in that split second or a couple of minutes of time between the time that the woman's husband yelled at her and she turned around and took it out on her seven-year-old. In that split second of time or that couple of minutes of time, there was enough time there was enough time to feel how horrible she felt, how he made her feel or how she felt as a result, he didn't make her, but as a result of what he said, how hurt she was. There is that moment in time of recognizing that it's our stuff, that the spilled drink on the floor of the seven-year-old actually has nothing to do with how terrible she felt in that moment. She was deeply hurt, stressed maybe. Her mind was going a thousand miles a minute about whatever it was that he said. And in a freeze of desperation, she turned and laid it all on her child. Think about your life. Think about how often your emotions towards one or more people, towards your community, towards anything in your life is actually projected onto it because you don't know how or you're not willing to process your own feelings first. Yeah, the spilled drink is aggravating, especially if that child does that all the time and if they're careless and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, it's annoying. But did it warrant that fury and rage that probably scared him? Did it warrant receiving abuse? She may have been, the wife may have been the receiver of something very abusive. How do we take a moment to feel the pain of it, to actually breathe into the pain of it, let it come up in us? It feels terrible. Maybe we need to cry a little bit. Maybe we need to punch a pillow. If we don't have time for that, maybe we need to learn how to accept it as our own pain that has to be processed by us and put it aside as we deal with the next thing. There was a moment of choice when that old guy picked up his gun and decided to shoot it once and for all at the 100th intrusion maybe that he's had that day 
or maybe because he's scared of all the misinformation he's received about black kids in his neighborhood. Maybe he thought something bad was about to happen to him. Maybe he was scared. He had a moment before he picked up that gun and decided to shoot it where he could have got holds of himself. He shot the kid in the head. It's amazing he survived. There was a moment. There is always a moment for us to take responsibility for our own feelings before we shoot the frigging gun at somebody, at our world, at something. Before we condemn somebody to some horrible fate because we're just angry and that anger anger always wants to move anger always wants to land on something it always does and it will we see it everywhere in our world and we need to quit it each one of us every day every day we don't have to love the person we don't have to enjoy being intruded upon we don't have to love cleaning up the thousandth mess of our seven-year-old we have to love the feelings we get that maybe we're a bad parent or something but we do have to be able to separate what really is causing our rage from who or what we're projecting it onto. There is always the grace coming in that offers us a split second or more of taking a breath and getting hold of ourselves, of feeling it, of letting it go enough so we don't react to the wrong person. That's the message, dear ones. Please take it to heart. It is an ongoing work for all of us, always, forever. Lots of love.